they take off running, screaming at the top of their lungs. You can see the water vapors on high beams. It's cold as shit. Really? It freezes, and you can see the water vapors like raising and lowering. We had a couple little incidents where things that we put weren't where we put them, they got knocked down. And I had a, a paranormal investigation. I'm not sure what is going on in this area, but here's another hotel that's supposed to be haunted. It's got quite the story, too. Oh, I know, I'm going to butcher this one. I think it's the Kaskaskia, Kaskaskia, Kaskaskia Hotel. I don't know what it is. Kaskaskia. It's in uh, downtown LaSalle, Illinois. This place has quite the uh, story to it and a bit of a history as well. Hopefully my uh, microphone's not picking up too much of the wind here. I've got the uh, little wind guard on, otherwise known as the dead cat. That's what they call it, believe it or not. I am guessing that the hotel part is right over here. This is just the hotel and maybe these were storefronts at one time. Looks like this whole building is just out of business, just shut down. And uh, maybe these were apartments up here. I could be wrong. If you know some of the information on this hotel, please comment below and let us know because some of the information regarding the hotel's operations that I was able to find online is pretty limited. You will find a lot of information though about the uh, hauntings and the uh, story that I will tell you about this hotel. Look at that up there. I don't know if you could see that or not. At the uh, very top floor, open a window and the uh, curtains are flapping in the wind. You're gonna definitely wanna stick around. I've got a couple of buildings that are, that have some good ghost stories to them that are haunted here in LaSalle that I will share with you. I'm guessing that this was the bar at one time. Yeah, we have different addresses here too. So it's, it's pretty much what I thought. Different storefronts here. So for example, 617, 619, and I'm sure this is all locked up. There's just, yeah. The uh, police station's right across the street. So that could be good and bad. Kind of tough to uh, really be nosy. That window up there is, the window frame's kind of falling out. But also good because if <laughs> there's some strange stuff going on back here, uh, maybe if I yell help real loud, <laughs> or maybe they just stay away, I don't know. Take a quick peek in uh, one of these storefronts here. There's a, a mail slot. <laughs> Building permit sign here. I wonder if they're doing some work. Oh, that boy, that thing's been there a long time. All of the uh, writing that they would have filled all of this out in. I was just going to say it was faded, but I don't think there was anything there actually. Little mailboxes, here we go. We could kind of peek in here a little bit. And again, I don't know if this all connects to the hotel itself on the inside, or if uh, these were just separate storefronts. Just so hard to, uh, really see what's going on inside. Boy, this place is really in despair right now. It needs a lot of work. A little information just on the hotel itself. There are uh, seven business people that uh, created the, uh, the hotel or the concept of building this hotel. I believe that goes back to 1912. And in 1914, they broke ground on the uh, building here and opened in 1915. It's an old hotel. Back alleyway of the uh, hotel here. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm already one step ahead of you. You want me to walk back here? I don't think we're going to find anything open, but 
keep watching because the front windows of the hotel are not uh, covered or anything. We'll be able to see through the front windows. And I'll show that to you shortly what the lobby area looked like. Looks like there was a uh, window here at one time. Maybe some sort of sign or something. The brick is all white. I don't know if the uh, building behind me was built at a much later time. I mean, it looks old. I'll look up there. That uh, plastic stuff is peeling off. I thought maybe that was on the inside, but it's on the outside. My goodness, look at these lines, these power lines. We can, yeah, <laughs> I'm not a tall person and I can scrape the camera on those if I wanted to. Those things are low. That window right there looks like it's open though. No, I'm not climbing up there. So this is all sealed off really good. I'm sure that door's locked. And uh, no, I'm not gonna jump the fence to uh, find out. It looks like at one time, it was beautiful. Someone trying to get in. <gasps> oh, he got in. I wonder what, what he's doing. Let's find out if he works here. You doing some work on the building? Oh, nice. Are you able to get in? Oh, I unlocked it. Hey, I'm sorry, someone's here. What are you doing with the camera? It's a documentary on haunted places. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Okay, Documentary on haunted places. Well, this place is haunted. That's what I hear. Going, That's what I hear. I've heard the stories of, I haven't really gotten into it on the film yet, but if you want to tell me, I'll, t I'll take it. Like the woman that committed the suicide or something? Or the one that jumped off? That jumped off and allegedly was it, was it her boyfriend that pushed her off or did she jump off, you know? Who knows? Can I go in the, at the edge of the doorway here with you guys? Uh, just to get the hall? You can, just go, in, go on in there. I won't put you guys on camera so we don't get you in trouble then or anything. Yeah, you'd get this far, oh man. Yeah, I won't do that. In the basement there when we were tearing down the one wall. Yeah. We knocked the wall down and up underneath the street was a, uh, so like literally a, like where we're at. Is there like a tunnel or something? Yeah. Is there really? We knocked the wall down and it was all urinals and toilets that were boarded up and walled up that you could never see before with bullet marks all through the old brick. Really? Yeah. Crazy mm -hmm. and, and I did read when I was coming down here that wasn't, was there someone else trying to restart the operation or get it going again yeah, and just... Yeah. And they just couldn't do it? Well, they haven't done it yet. Everyone wants them to tear it down. Some want to rebuild it for a hotel. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I say tear it down. Yeah. Tear it down? Yeah, it's, so it's, been, it's, it's been empty a long time, I take it. Sure looks like it at least, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even the columns are falling apart. We, because uh, we have like tradition and people like, will come and be like, they want to do a seance and then they take off running and scream it at the top of their lungs, same poster here, <coughs> fucking running down the street. How do you guys get in there and get away? Do you, what, they know you or something? Or? I don't know. <laughs> they just leave you alone? Hey, no, but literally when you go into the sub basements, yeah. you can see the water vapors on high beams. It's cold as Really? It freezes, and you can see the water vapors like raising and lowering. Wow. Because you have to use high beams to see, because there's no power. Wow. Somebody was in here? We are in the lobby part of this hotel. How's it pronounced, by the way? Kaskaskia? Kaskaskia? Kaskaskia. Okay. I'm in the lobby part of the Kaskaskia. And the pictures that I did see online of it just looked incredible what it looked like back in the day when it, uh, when it was happening. Wow. Look at this lobby. That was a restaurant. This was a restaurant over here? Wow. So 
So this was the restaurant at one time. Look at these uh, columns. Original, well, maybe not original paint, but all flaking and stuff. Definitely been there a long time. Is there electricity in this building? There's no electricity. Look at the ceiling, all the paint just flaking. Wow. But the artwork, the attention to detail on the columns and the uh, everything is just incredible. I'm assuming this was the front desk area. Front desk area, yes. Oh. Still all marble, still all original marble. Original marble still, huh? This is where the employees worked. Some sort of safe back here. <laughs> really nothing in there. I know it's hard to see. Were these stores over here, were they all connected to the hotel? What's that? That's your sign, isn't it? Yeah, but before that, it wasn't. Do you think it's the ghost of... There's a bunch of weird things in this building. What kind of things do you uh, encounter when you're in here doing maintenance? Oh, we don't. We don't. We stay out of here. Never <laughs> five, 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 five. You're out of here. I don't blame you. I'd well, love to show you more, I just can't. I understand. Is there a room on any rooms on this floor? Huh? Are there any rooms on this level that no, I could just no. throw the camera in? No. No, so undergrounds, they have a big spot, all that shit's underneath us. Can't even see down there, you gotta have high beam lights. Oh yeah, that's the Wow. That's the old uh, pay phones that used to be here, but you're long gone. And I'm not able to go down here, but this will bring you down to an area, basement of the hotel. There's some underground stuff that goes under the road. And I'm told that there's cold spots that you can feel down there, restrooms over here. And uh, I have been told that this place is definitely haunted, so maintenance that just Make sure that the building's not going to crumble on people walking up and down the sidewalk. Uh, they are telling me after five in the afternoon, they will not come in here. What was this? Oh, really? This is pretty wild. It's just some freaky stuff. Yeah, let me go. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate you guys letting me in. Yeah. They go in as far as you could. Sure do appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, they have like homeless people living here sometimes. One guy threw a bucket of piss on me. Ew. Yeah. So, really? Yeah, so if we got something up there, I'm going to. And that's what I was thinking when I first came here. I was like, well, if I'm able to get in, the last thing I want to do is encounter like a homeless person or drug addicts or something. Trust me, we have. I'm sure. Thanks, guys. You have a great day. It was very musty smelling. The temperature was consistent from when I walked through the uh, lobby, which is right here, a uh, banner of it, by the way. And that was the uh, restaurant area, the uh, entrance to the restaurant. Look at the old clock that they had. I'm guessing those were like room keys that they put in there. And he was telling me that was the original marble. And I tried to get the ceiling as much as I could where we were able to see the uh, where these light fixtures were hanging. Right now it's just wires hanging out of the ceiling. Original flooring. Um, they did say, I don't know if you're able to hear much, but he said a lot of weird stuff goes on in here. So what I could find online is that this hotel did shut down back in 2001 and there's been all kinds of attempts from different parties to reopen it and it's just failed, it's not worked. So it is haunted by a uh, spirit of a young woman who committed suicide by jumping from the window on the top floor. 
it's getting harder to see with the sun poking out. She was on the top floor apparently. And she committed suicide in the 1920s. Now some say she didn't jump off, at least her own free will. It was her boyfriend that pushed her off of the building at the top where she fell to her death. Something that's very interesting that I read online is with her ghost, the ghost in here, is when this was open back in the late 90s and 2000, right before it shut down and even in the 80s, employees would say that they would hear like the click of the heels, like someone click, clicking their heels, like the Wizard of Oz. Maybe not saying, I'm in Kansas right now, but uh, you could hear the click of the heels echoing throughout the building. And you can also feel dark spots or cold spots rather down in that basement that the uh, gentleman uh, that uh, let me take a peek in, they had uh, confirmed that as well. I also read where this building would be empty. I think still in business, but just maybe in the middle of the week and uh, nothing going on. And the elevators or the elevator itself would just kind of start going up and down to the uh, different floors. But there was no one here, maybe other than an employee or something. I would love to get up there. So curious uh, what it looks like up there. Was that just like a suite at one time? Way at the top where it's got its balcony up there. I'm guessing that was a flagpole or something at one time on the roof. I know it's hard to see. Looks like it could have been just a bigger room or a suite or something that had its own balcony up there. But that's as far as I could show you. That's as far as we can go. We've got some more businesses to check out or some buildings rather that are supposed to be haunted. With some good stories. Let's move on. Who knew a little neighborhood bar could be haunted? This is the 9th Street Pub, right around downtown LaSalle, still in downtown, near the downtown area in Illinois. Look at this, <laughs> flew right into my face almost. I think that's the uh, Mrs. Sonnenberg. There, there she goes, pick up the bag, Mrs. Sonnenberg. So Mrs. Sonnenberg, she's got a house while well, she has passed away. So she had a house and she hated this pub. She didn't like the, the noise. She didn't like the riffraff from the patrons. We'll call it riffraff. I'm sure they're very friendly people. The customers. Bar is still open, by the way. Yeah, I think this is a part of the house right over here. Yeah, it does extend. Probably part of the house right there. Look at the difference of the roof. So she passed away, and the owner of this bar bought the house. And they extended the bar into the, uh, the house area. Kind of converted the house and created an extension. You could see where the bar ended and the house would start. So one day, an employee that is just way too young to know the story about Mrs. Sonnenberg, according to what I read, was cleaning up a section of the bar, which is also Mrs. Sonnenberg's house. And when he was doing that, he heard, what the hell are you doing? And that was it, simple question, what the hell are you doing? I'm not making this up, you'll find it online. Kind of freaked him out a little bit. And it turns out that was the ghost of Mrs. Sonnenberg, if you are into these uh, ghost stories and the hauntings. But Mrs. Sonnenberg, her house, taken over by the 9th Street Pub here, and her ghost living on. Apparently, Mrs. Sonnenberg's not happy in the afterlife either. You wanna know what it looks like inside? All right, we could check it out. Looks like we have a little bar set up here. Not ready for home. No. Someone told me like a haunted story of this place. Oh, yeah, so. I, I can oh, tell we you got a lot of Oh, you got him? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I know something like Mrs. Sonnenberg or something yeah, in the house. Lillian. I named a burger after her. Oh, is this your place? Yeah. I'll show you a little. Yeah. And I bought that house in 85 over there. Yeah. And one day, out of nowhere, that picture frame showed up in the basement. I don't know where it came from. I didn't dig it out. Somebody did. Yeah. That's Lil sitting right there with the Right back. in the. In the corner uh, there. We have we have two ghosts actually. You got two. Yeah. Well, on this side right here, back in the day, this this was the 
the break in the, the tent, it was a deli and a grocery store. Okay. Okay. This was the break in here, I'll show you the picture. There were, there were two front doors. You can see where it burned in 1970. It burned above the, the door to the left. The right side, it was a, a, a deli which had all the charcuterie, so you go in and be all the sausages and bacons all hanging. Yeah. And they had ice boxes. When we were digging out the basement here, yeah. we had a couple little incidents where things that we put weren't where we put them, they got knocked down. And I had a, a paranormal investigation. We were here after hours, we're in the basement, he's got the radio tuned to a, a I don't know what frequency, but it's just sitting there going. Yeah. All of a sudden, get the knife. I'm standing there looking at the guy like you're looking at me, and then, and he goes, "You just heard that, didn't you?" I go, "Yeah, get the knife." He goes, "Got to be frank." I was standing where Eva is right now, and I looked over, and there was William walking in a white lace uh, gown. We just like a like a fog sort of vision. Yeah. It was Lily. She was in the house next door. She used to call me all the time. Okay. I'd come change the light bulb. I, I, I need somebody to bring my garbage out. Can you cut the lawn for me? And I, I was her friend. Sure. But when, I, when the music got loud at night, because I've been doing music since 1980, yeah. she would call and say, is John there? And I'd talk to her because I was here a lot of the time. Yeah. And she goes, would you please turn that music down? Yeah. So eventually I put styrofoam in the windows and we insulated the wall. It, it, it helped her out. But okay. She fell in her closet. Okay. And the door opened in, and she fell against the door, and she was there for three days. Before, before anyone found her? She's still here. She's, she's our still. Friend, she's our friendly ghost. She's a friendly ghost. Yeah. I, I read something about where I guess you had a younger employee that's cleaning or something, and yeah. she said something like, "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, history with it. One of the ten most haunted in Illinois. What else does she do then? When you're oh, she'll, cleaning? So you turn a light off, and she'll turn it back on. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Uh, there's. Other people like Buddha was here earlier. He's seen her, and then Jeff Thompson has seen her. Yeah. And with just weird shit. Yeah. You know, just stuff you wouldn't expect. You're just like, it's got to be a ghost. Yeah. So she's not really a unfriendly spirit no, or anything no, like that. She's a friendly ghost. Oh, she's a friendly ghost. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Can, can I take a peek at her house area? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the bar. Go on over there. <laughs> wow. There you go. That's the uh, owner of the uh, bar. This is her house right here. So this is uh, when he added onto the bar. Probably just took out this wall because the bar was so close. Maybe added on a little extension when this was a part of her house. And he said that the bathrooms, which are back here, were a part of her living room. This is that fenced in back patio and this was actually a part of her side lot. And there you go. So she's a, uh, a friendly ghost. She's not mean, just not big on all of the uh, music. And I'm not sure if you were able to hear over the music when Jeff was telling me that they insulated the uh, bar more so she wouldn't hear it. What do you think? Do you believe in the paranormal, the ghost activities? Is that something you believe in? Comment below, let me know. Do you experience anything like that? Or do you know of a uh, haunted place in your area and you've kind of experienced something kind of really strange. Love to hear your story, comment below. Saw this over here. Trolley ghost tours. Must be one of the ghosts. I think they caught one of the ghosts. <laughs> All right, so here we are at the Star Rock Lodge. That's known to have some ghosts of its own here.
this is the lobby that greets you when you walk into the Starved Rock Lodge. And this historic lodge within the Starved Rock State Park is rumored to be a focal point of supernatural activity. Staff and guests have reported unexplained footsteps, flickering lights, and the inexplicable scent of cigar smoke in empty rooms. Some believe these occurrences are linked to the spirits of past guests or possibly the residual energy from the park's tumultuous history. I'll tell you about that in a moment. I know it's hard to see this with the glare coming from the light behind me. It's Abe Lincoln back there. He's Illinois is the land of Lincoln, just in case you did not know. Oh, if you didn't see this in the uh, previous video, unfortunately we did not see waterfalls, but we did walk in that canyon. That's in the uh, previous video for Star Rock. Great room. I think they hold weddings in here. Another little gift store with all kinds of Star Rock sweatshirts, some baseball caps, canes for the hiking, some walking sticks, and that. Pretty views. The uh, Illinois River is way out there. Again, you'll see everything, all the beauty down there uh, in the previous video. Just check that out. I'll make sure that uh, pops up as well at the end of this video so you can just click on it. Starved Rock is a very pretty state park. But the park's name itself is rooted in a tragic historical event known as the Starved Rock Massacre. According to legend, in the 1760s, a group of Illinois Confederacy tribes sought to refuge atop Starved Rock during a siege by the Potawatomi. Eventually, the tribes ran out of food and they were forced to surrender. The site is said to be haunted by the restless spirits of those who perished during this tragic event. Some visitors claim to have encountered eerie apparitions and heard distant cries echoing through the canyons. There's also the story about the Lady in Green. A mysterious, reoccurring apparition known as the Lady in Green has been reported by several visitors to Starved Rock. Dressed in an elegant green gown from a bygone era, she is often seen near this old lodge. The identity of this person remains unknown, but her presence adds an element of intrigue to the park, leaving visitors wonder about the untold stories of the past. Let's see if we could peek at a room really quick. I see some maids are down here. Oh, these are very, very nice, very charming. Little ceiling fan in here. Very rustic. And there you go. Very nice. Let me take a uh, quick peek at what the rooms look like. What do you think of that story of the Starved Rock Lodge? Kaskaskia. Kaskaskia. <laughs> the name of the first hotel. I'll get it. I'll keep working on it. Those were three pretty good ghost stories, though. Whether you believe it or not, it's always fun. And I'll tell you something else fun. As I'm at another hotel here in Wisconsin Dells as we wrap up this video, I'm at the View Hotel. This is one of two hotels that you could stay at with our winter meetup coming up January 24th through the 26th. I know we've already missed the sunset, but look at that beautiful sky behind me. It's a neat hotel and rooms start at only $2.28 for the entire weekend. That includes tax, by the way. Resort fees have been eliminated, and this is a discounted rate. So you'll definitely want to get a room here at The View for our Wisconsin winter event coming up January 24th through the 26th. But if you'd like something a little bit cheaper, but a real nice place, I have another option for you. This is Natura Treescape, also in Wisconsin Dells, really close to the view as well. And this is under 135 for the entire weekend. Again, that includes your taxes. There are no resort fees. These are discounted rates for Friday, January 24th through Sunday, January 26th for our big winter meetup event. 
That moon is beautiful back there. Perfect for Halloween. Okay, so back to the winter meetup coming up the, at the end of January. We will have games. We are going to have prizes. We're going to hang out. I'm also working on securing discounted passes for snow tubing and other fun winter activities. Oh, yeah. And those prizes, they're going to be fun things for here in Wisconsin Dells, like freebies and discounts. So we'd love to meet up with you for our first winter meetup coming up January 24th through the 26th. Get your hotel reservation secured now. Book it. The phone number is on the screen, and you'll also see an account number. Use that account number so you can get the discount. You need to book now because there's a limited amount of rooms available. So again, call that phone number on your screen. It will go straight to reservations. You'll be booking with one of the hotels directly. The company owns both the view and the nature treescape and make sure you use the account number so you can get your discount as well follow me on facebook and my instagram page as more details become available because i will be posting them there as well, well that's going to wrap it up for this video a lot more haunted halloween fun it's all coming up make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up that really helps me out here with the youtube algorithm and share the videos as well share me don't be greedy share me with your friends you'll see me in the next one bye bye Subscribe to Maverick Hair!